I'm Dr. Adam Millman. Thank you for watching. The subtle shift in one's self-image and the power to reach one's maximum potential. Not infrequently in my clinical practice, patients will relate to me a history of a previous alcohol, cigarette, uh, cigarette use, or um, substance abuse. And the way uh, the conversation goes is something like this, where I'll ask, do, do you use any alcohol, do you use any drugs? And the answer is, I'm 30 years clean, but I'll always be an addict. I'm 30 years clean, I haven't had a drink in 30 years, but I'll always be an alcoholic. Um, and this is similar to when people get out of jail and years and years and years in, in the, uh, at, since they're released, they still refer to themselves as an ex-con. And I think this comes from the very famous and very effective 12-step program, um, most commonly associated with uh, treating people with alcohol abuse, where part of it is a recognition that you have a problem and that you're incapable of solving the problem that yourself. Um, and taking responsibility for it, which is fantastic because if you can't take responsibility for having a problem, then you're unlikely to fix it. My only, one of my only criticisms might be is that in the future, years, decades in the future, to constantly associate yourself with the previous problem that you no longer have and to link that to your current identity, I think might be fraught with problems. For, uh, for, for one reason is that if you ever struggle in the future and you have a a difficult time with stress or anxiety or sadness, it's easy to go back to the to what you used to use in the past that got you into trouble. So if you have come under stress and you're sad and you're not able to deal with a certain situation, you can go back to the alcohol. Why? Because I'll, because I'll always be an alcoholic. When people say, I'm 30 years sober, but I'll always be an alcoholic. So in the future, if you have trouble um, that you're having difficulty dealing with, you can go back to the alcohol, you can go back to the drugs because that's just who you are. It's part of your identity. When you link the, when you link your identity to that bad trait, then I think it's easier to go back to. Some people refer to themselves as, as a fat person, as an obese person, I'll always be an obese person. It makes it very difficult to, f to fix um, a certain problem with their weight if this is how they view themselves. When they lose weight and they say to themselves, I'll always be a fat person. This is really unfortunate. If they continue to dream and in their dreams they see themselves as a heavy person. If they see, if they think that's just essentially who they are, then even though they've lost weight, if they come under stress, they become sad, they're unable to deal with anxiety or life's inevitable difficult situations, they'll go back to the food because, hey, that's just who I am. I'll always be this way. So even though they've gotten away from the bad behavior that made them heavy, they can go back to the bad behavior, calling on the food to deal with stress because that's just the way they see themselves. And the former alcoholic, the, the alcoholic who comes under life, life stress will go back to the alcohol if they still see themselves as being an ex-alcoholic. And even people that have trouble with the law, if they see themselves as an ex-con in the future, when things get difficult and they need money, they may resort to their bad behavior because they see themselves they see their identity as being linked to being a convict. So linking your identity to being a convict, an ex-con, linking your identity to being an, al an alcoholic or an ex-alcoholic. This, I think, is going to be potentially dangerous when, when life stresses come. It's only when you develop a new identity as a, as a mother, as a father, as a Christian, or as a Jew, a Muslim, a Hindu, when you develop a new identity, then it is more difficult to go back to the bad behavior because that's not who you are anymore. I, I frequently refer to Zig Ziglar, but he said very famously, that yesterday really did end yesterday. The past is a canceled check and tomorrow is a promissory note. That whatever happened in the past is important because it got, to, got you to where you are today, regardless of how difficult it was. But infinitely more important is how you see your future rather than what's happened in the past. Tony Robbins used to refer to people not being able to get into the future by looking in the rear view mirror. If you're looking in the rear view mirror, you're not going to get to where you want to go because you're always going to see the past and you're not going to be able to get to where you want to go. And I've said many times before, if you live in the past, you will have no future. So to, to constantly view yourself as the person that you used to be, even though you have now come past that problem, years and decades in the future, off of the alcohol, off of the drugs, off of the cigarettes, no longer relying on food, living a, living a, a a, uh, a just life with no interactions with the law. If you still refer to yourself as that bad thing in the past, having those, those uh, tendencies, those addictions, those vices, um, living a, a life that was not by the law, 
then when things get difficult, you will go back to the alcohol, you will go back to the cigarettes because, hey, that's just who I am. It's only when you take on a new identity, not associated with the alcohol, with the drugs, with the cigarettes, with the overeating of the food, with, with being a criminal or an ex-criminal, when you see yourself as something new, when you start to dream and see yourself as a thin person, when you no longer associate yourself with those things of the past that you're trying to get away from, when you have a new identity, only then can you reach your potential because your mind, as Zig Ziglar would say, your mind and your body will go to work to fulfill, to create the image that the mind creates. If you see yourself as an alcoholic or as an ex-alcoholic or as an ex-con uh, or an, an ex-heroin user, then, your then if you see yourself always linked to it, then it won't be long because before you your mind and your body start making decisions to get you to go back into that, that bad way when things get difficult. But when you make a break from that past, when you make a break from that bad identity and develop a new identity, then you can really achieve the success that you deserve rather than reminding yourself constantly of a problem that is no longer that no longer exists. Develop a new identity and an identity associated with your success in the future, a success that you need. And therefore it won't be easy to go back to the bad things because you'll have some you'll have a new future, a new and you'll have a new identity that your future can be associated to. And then when you have in your mind this new identity, then your mind and body will go to work to create the image that is in your mind of something somebody successful, somebody that is no longer associated with the vices of the past and problems, legal problems in the past, vices of the past, a weight problem. When you see yourself as different in your mind, then your mind and body will go to work to create that picture that you have in your mind of yourself. Thank you very much for watching.